Um, this is John with WestTheGospel.com. Welcome. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the influence of the news on our culture and why I think it's a worldly influence. And, um, you know, recently I was thinking up all these different methods of making money, like a side hustles. And one of the things I came across was um, the idea of affiliate marketing. Um, affiliate marketing enables a person to um, blog, create a blog with you know popular trending articles or whatever, and then you can bring in ads to uh, uh, Amazon, and uh, and this can increase passive income, which is not a bad idea. I'm still I'm still all for it, but one of the things that I um, one of the ideas that I had uh, come up with just out of my head was by using something called Google Trends. Google Trends is is the way for you to be able to figure out what are the top Google searches today or last week or whatever. Today's Google Trends pulls from news articles and I was like, oh, I guess I should start a news blog. That was about a month ago and I realized I have absolutely no passion for the news, and so I deleted my my website a couple of days ago. Um, I also realized another thing, that all of my family members and all of my relatives, all they could ever do is talk about the news, and and I never really realized it till now, and. Um, but that is one of the main reasons why I never really took an interest in the news because when I got born again around the year two, 2000, um, feeling the Holy Spirit was the greatest thing that had ever happened in my life. And if I hadn't experienced that, I probably would have ended up just like everybody else, just talking about the news all the time. Um, wouldn't have wouldn't have sat there, wouldn't have criticized it, wouldn't have thought twice about it. You know, just do what everybody else is doing. The Zeitgeist, the spirit of the world, right? The top articles right now are uh, ESPN, FoxSports.com, CBSSports.com, ESPN. Uh, NBC News, CBSSports.com, and uh, Sooners Wire, and uh, ESPN, and Oregon Live, and Syracuse. All of them are football articles. Oregon football, Ohio State versus Notre Dame, Auburn football, Barcelona, Nick Curdles, uh, a sports guy that apparently died. I mean, he died. People die, right? but 100,000 people searched about it. Rutgers football, um, Oklahoma football, Florida State versus Clemson, TCU football, Syracuse football, 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 football. One of the things that um, I noticed about my grandpa growing up is that he – he was willing to talk about anything. I mean, I could talk to him about anything. In fact, I don't even remember him ever talking about sports to me at all. It was usually military history, <laughs> but you could you could tell that he could he was not he had no problems talking about any subject. One of the unique things about him is that he was always into some new book all the time. Whenever he would visit us, he had a 500 to 800 page book with him at all time. He was always plowing through. These were usually military history or crime fiction books. But you can clearly see the guy spent a lot of time going to the library or the bookstore. And when people read, when dads read, when grandpas read, they become conversational. They become verbose. But it's usually only about the things they read, <laughs> of course. Um and clearly he was not confined to only following news articles or news stories or just talking about news. Because let me tell you, soon on, after I felt the Holy Spirit, I developed the view that 
news subjects were about as shallow as it gets. Shallow as it gets. Shallow as it gets. Look, Oregon football was searched one million times in one day yesterday. My reaction to that growing up would be like, who freaking cares? Well, one million people do. Notice this. I just look at this and I see competition. In light of my last video, I made an angry rant video a couple of years ago. Why do Christians hate theology? This. This, I think. Uh, there's no desire to be rich towards God. There's no desire to know God more, to expound his word more. Everything's confined to church because everything else is filled up with news and business. The Bible says, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Oh, well, there's nothing sinful about football. While we bash each other's brains out and talk about how much better we are than others, stronger than we are than others, and how we're going to defeat others. There's nothing wrong with football. Football is competition. Sports is competition. Everything's about competition. I'm better than you. And all the while, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, humility, gentleness, self-control. Hmm. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, Team Tibbo, Team uh, Tim, bleh. the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Tim Tebow, going into football and bashing everybody's brains out. Oh, that makes it okay then. What does the Bible say about news? Honestly, I've never really given much thought to this till now. Um. I I just remembered that I was on a mission trip um, in India in 2008. And while I was sitting on that train in India, I got I got um, through reading the book The Imitation of Christ, which was one of the most difficult books I've ever read in my life. And all it is is about suffering the whole time. Everything is suffering. Suffer for God. That's the main theme of the book. But one of the things that I, what I found validating, was that they he preaches against uh, following the news. On page 37, you're going to hear him say, "Oh, oh, here comes the other one." I've got two alarms. Watch this. Come on, baby. Come on. The people are watching. So in any case, I mean, I was I was reading The Imitation of Christ, and the guy's speaking against the news. He's like, don't be distracted by news. It's it's worldly. It, it, it's just superficial vanity, and it distracts people from the Lord. And so all I have to say about that is the guy's totally right. Here, here's the quote. Um, if you hadn't gone outside the walls... You wouldn't – I don't really know what he's talking about there, the walls. Oh, he's talking about the walls of the monastery. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've been living like a monk since the Holy Spirit came into my life practically. I only want to be friends with people that love the Lord. Well, that's a very limiting thing, you know. Uh, if you build your whole social, net, social network around talking about – the news, which basically boils down to three subjects, uh, government, entertainment, and crimes. So if you if that's all you talk about, you know, it's basically politics, sports, and crimes, 
you know, with a couple little occasional additions every once in a while. Basically, all of your friends you have no spiritual relationship with. It's superficial and it's vain and it's shallow. You're living in the book of Ecclesiastes, essentially. There's nothing new under the sun. It's the same old, shallow stuff. People are not, people don't realize that the Holy Spirit of God is in theology. Um, it, it's not, it's not, it's not a book club. It's the gateway into the eternal. But people, this is all hidden from them. Jesus pointed to this stuff 2,000 years ago. Um, so, imitation of Christ says, if you hadn't gone outside the walls of the monastery, you wouldn't have heard the disturbing rumors. Better for you to have stayed inside in blissful ignorance. <laughs> ignorance is bliss. From which it follows that you might, may delight in hearing the latest news on the strand. Strand. But you'll surely have to deal with the terrible dislocation that results. Yeah, I mean, he, the guy presents a very good argument. He's basically saying if you follow Fox News, it's going to create anxiety in you. And life has enough anxiety already. Why increase it by following the news all the time? You know? Amen. Now, I'm not saying that the news isn't useful every once in a while. I do live like a monk. I don't follow the news. I haven't watched the news in years. Well, that's that's kind of not true. I watch the news when I feel like something is going screwy in the business world. Like if if I'm cold calling and and all of a sudden sales just fall off. I'm like, "Whoa, dude, what what's going on? Why is everybody ignoring my sales calls all of a sudden? Everything was going fine." Usually what happens is, I, or I'm, people will keep saying the same thing. Like I'll, I'll, I'll call tons of companies, and they'll say the same thing. And what it has been for the past two, two years is COVID, 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 COVID. COVID is the reason why our business is suffering. Right. Um, I think it's a little bit more complicated than that, but if the belief is widespread in the business community, it makes me want to check the news about it. And so I'll check the news about it. Um, so I'm a lot more selective about my news because if it affects my world, my own little world that I've created for myself, in which I hardly ever look at the news. Look, I spend my time on theology, the Bible, my wife, and my daughters. And really, I have little to no time for friends outside of that. I have tried to uh, strike up conversations and make friends with guys at church, at work, at, at my, uh, my daughter's school. And you know what I find? Most guys don't want to talk. They don't want to talk about the Lord, and they don't want to talk about the school, and they don't want to talk about their job. Maybe they want to talk about the news, you know? I have a relative who says that he has he has all these friends because he talks about the news. Maybe that's true. Maybe if you just talk about the news, you can make friends like that. But you also have to stop talking about the Bible, Jesus, God. So you have to make a choice. You're either going to talk about the Bible or you're going to talk about the news. You're going to build your social network around the Bible or you're going to build it around the news. Which one? Well, it would be way more popular if you just ignore the Bible, keep that a quote a private matter. And you only talk about news subjects, but here's the problem. Now your whole social network is built around vanity, basically, Ecclesiastes. Your whole social network is built around hollow things to talk about. You have absolutely no spiritual connection with anyone. Camaraderie is great. It's great to have that camaraderie. Um, but if they're not following the Lord... We're talking about gratuitous profanity and cussing just for the sake of cussing. We're talking about people who with really loose morals and you probably don't want them hanging around your wife. Uh, 
What does the Bible say about news? Honestly, the news has always been around. When we, we say the modern day news, you know, newspapers haven't always been around, I don't think. I don't think there were newspapers in the ancient world. Uh, I don't think there were newspapers in the medieval times. Newspapers came out with the printing press. So what did people do before that? Well, I think that uh, I was watching this this movie called uh, Saint Teresa of Avila recently. It was a good TV movie that came out in the 80s. Uh, there was a person there that shared the news with the local community, and it was government. Okay, everybody wants to hear government news. What's going on with our rulers, our governors? Well, there was this guy. He he went into a big city, saw the king of Spain, and then came back to this tiny little town, into the town square, and started speaking almost like a street preacher. Okay? And they'd call that the town crier, I, I guess. And that could be anybody. But the guy just started speaking, and then a crowd started coming around him. And he was telling the news about about the king. Nobody really knows if anything he was saying was truthful or not, but they were interested nevertheless. So you could see how news could lead to just being a rumor. But in any case, Proverbs 25, 25. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Well, good news. But when is the news really ever good news? If government and entertainment are the main subjects of news articles and news reports, we're talking about uh, subjects like this, competition and competition. Yeah, government, politics, one is competing with one another. And you got a lot of, a lot of mudslinging and insulting going on. Does that sound like something the Lord wants you to care about a whole lot? And then you got sports. This sports team had this many points, and this sports team had this many points. Competition yet again. Competition, competition. Everything's competition. So the devil's got everybody thinking about competition all the time. A million searches for a football team yesterday. A million. Proverbs 112, verse 7. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. You know why I'm not afraid of bad news? Because I trust in the Lord and I don't listen to the news. Hey, if you don't want to be afraid of bad news, just ignore it. <laughs> that's that simple. But that's the lifeline to my whole social network. Well, maybe you should rethink your social network. Maybe you should just focus on your wife and kids like Charles Ingalls did and have like maybe two friends. That's it. I love Little House on the Prairie. I based my whole life on it, practically. One of the one of the episodes. I, I'm kidding about that, by the way. Um, but uh, there's an episode where they go over the subject of the news. It's just a slanderous. It's just an. Inf, it's just, all it is is just a vehicle, a channel of slandery, and 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 oftentimes just gossip. Ooh, is juice, juicy mor morsel? A new sex scandal just came out. And this is what you want to talk about. Romans 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world. Look, if you want to be conformed to the world, think about what the world thinks about all the time. Just think about what they think about. It's the news. You know, and you have absolutely nothing valuable to teach your kids spiritually. So they'll just become little news hawkers themselves when they get older. Is that what you want to do? Bring the world into your home rather than make it a refuge from the world? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Theology. You know, it's... Uh, 
it's not surprising to me that the Bible, the source of all theology, would tell people to read theology. It would tell people to say, hey, ignore the news and read theology. You know, when I look at Jesus, I don't see a guy hawking news, news from the street. I see a guy who's really into theology and prayer. What else? What else kind of Bible verses might apply to the news? Luke 11, verse 34. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. When it is bad, your body is full of darkness. I've struggled with the subject of watching movies uh, ethically over the years. Um, and eventually I got to the point where I like VidAngel. I like ClearPlay. If I'm tired and I'm exhausted from a day of work and I want to relax and watch a movie, I don't have to worry about profanity and nudity coming out in the movie if I just turn one of those filters on. I also have gotten into the, into the habit of using closed captioning so that if I see a cuss word popping up on a movie or, or a show, I'll just bleep it out with the muter so it doesn't get spouted into our into our household for all of my children to hear you know my two children to hear so i i don't i don't i think that you know in televisions some some people i've met in pentecostal circles and uh do not believe in tv at all they they call it the one-eyed monster i think that's a bit strict but i mean that's you know, but it's based off of this, your eye is the lamp of the body, and when your eye is healthy. In Psalm 101, verse 3, I will not set anything before my eyes that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Backsliding and falling away from the Lord, rejecting theology in the Bible in favor of just superficial, shallow, and vain news conversations to build a social network. Because that's probably why people get into the news. You know, I never really thought of it that way. But if that's if that's how people build their friendships around news article conversations or news TV conversations, and that's what their friendships are based on, man, then I'm glad I'm unpopular. You know, I'm not popular in my private life. Uh, I, I try to follow the Lord. Which means the Bible and theology. That's that's what I talk about. That's what I want to think about. And I hope I get more and more in that direction as time goes on. I'm not going to make any space for the news. I tried to think. I thought about it. Hmm. What if I create a news blog with affiliate marketing? Yeah. And then I realized the Holy Spirit in me has absolutely no desire to do that at all. Absolutely no desire. I got no compulsions from the Holy Spirit to do that. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit doesn't care about the news. I really don't think he does. Uh, I think that all he ever cares about is pointing people towards the gospel. I'm on this site called openbible.info. What does the Bible say about the media? And for some reason they decided to put this in here, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. I was like, wow. Why would they put that in there? Why would they put bad company ruins good morals, that verse, in the article about what the Bible says about media? Probably because the world, when, when, when James talks about friendship with the world, uh, the world is using the news to make their friendships. That's what they want to talk about. Wow, what a revelation. And then it's like, wow, I could win friends and influence people if I just follow the news. Yeah, you probably can. But then it's like, win friends and influence people because you follow the news? What? As much as I like 
uh, camaraderie. If that's what camaraderie has to come down to, that you have to do that in order to build a group of friends, ugh. what you start, you must maintain. You have to keep doing it. There's no way out. Man, what a trap. So that's my thoughts on that. God bless you out there. Keep following Jesus, who's the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen.